Hi there, let's have a look at this uh, quick PowerPoint on paints and pigments. Now, how many different kinds of paints can you talk about? How many different types of paints do you know of? Well, let's go through some, one by one. Emulsion paints. Emulsion is a water-based paint. Um, you'd use it to paint the walls of your house. It's not toxic, it's not particularly volatile, so it doesn't evaporate easily, so it doesn't smell, um, and it washes off really easily. We've got thermochromic paints. Now, these contain liquid crystals, and they change color when there's a temperature change. We've got gloss. Gloss paints are usually used for wood. They reflect different amounts of light. Um, there's one manufacturer that has flat, eggshell, semi-gloss, gloss, and just lots of other le levels of sort of how, how much light they reflect, so different levels of shininess. These are oil-based, so they can't be washed off with water, and they're a little, little bit more volatile. We've got oil paints. Now, these are particles of pigment suspended in an oil. Now you can change the viscosity of these by adding solvents like white spirit. So if you want it a little bit, uh, a little bit more runny, a little bit less viscous, you add a little bit of, uh, of white spirit. They're used in painting, uh, finishing and protecting wood, that sort of thing. We have also got uh, phosphorescent paints. These will glow for about 12 hours after being exposed to light. They usually give off, give off a green or a blue sort of glow. And finally, we've got enamel. Now enamel paints dry really hard, they're really hard wearing, so they've got lots of uses like painting concrete or engines or brakes or floors or anything like that, lots of uses. So what are the ingredients of a paint? Well firstly there's a solvent. Now solvents dissolve stuff, but you have to have the right one for the right job. So for example, water will dissolve emulsion paint. But if you want to dissolve something like an oil-based paint, you're going to need white spirit or something a bit stronger. So you have to get the right solvent for the right job. Paint companies add these solvents to thin the paint out and makes it easier to spread. Secondly, they have a pigment in them. This is what gives it its color. Now pigments work by absorbing a certain wavelength of light and reflecting other wavelengths. And our eyes interpret these wavelengths as color. Three, a binding medium. Usually a liquid polymer which binds the pigment to the surface that you're painting and that gives you a nice continuous layer when the paint dries. These polymers are dissolved by the solvent. Okay, so these, these binding polymers get dissolved by the solvent, something like white spirit, and that's why it makes it easier to paint, a little bit more runny because the polymers get dissolved. Um, sometimes you don't have to have the liquid polymer, you can just use a touch of oil. But uh, the third ingredient is a binding medium. Okay, a term that you need to know is a colloid. Now, <clears throat> when you get a substance dispersed with particles of another substance, that's what a colloid is. So, for example, fog. Fog is an example of little water droplets dispersed in the air. Or smoke particles, little particulates dispersed in air. Now, paint is a colloid of pigments dispersed in a liquid, and that liquid is usually the binding polymer and the solvent. So, let's talk about paint drying. How does an oil-based paint dry? When an oil-based paint dries, the solvent evaporates and the binding medium dries to form a skin and that skin sticks the polymer to the surface. In an emulsion, in a water-based paint, there's a small amount of oil which acts as the binding agent and when the water evaporates, the droplets of oil stick together to make a continuous film and this sticks the pigment to the surface. The particles in a colloid are so small, they generally stay dispersed. However, sometimes if you had a, a can of paint sitting around for a long time, it's going to need, uh, it's going to need stirring. So that's why they generally stay in that, that colloid or form, because they're so small. That's it. Really, really quick one. Here's some questions for you. Um, have a pause of the video now. Um, unpause it and have a check out the answers. Thank you very much for watching.